I'm back. So we're going to do a couple of diseases for the adrenal cortex. Uh, adrenal cortex diseases include, cough, she look like a man, cushions, a little bit too much cushion for the pushing, and Addison's, we need to add a little something. So let's get started on um, a review for pathway. So the adrenal cortex, we said that cholesterol moves into the adrenal cortex. It is stimulated by ACTH. ACTH comes from where? The anterior pituitary, correct. And who acts on the anterior pituitary to cause the release of the ACTH? CRH. And CRH comes from where? The hypothalamus. So um, after cholesterol enters, it goes through a couple of steps. There's enzymes that actually convert these different steps. And three different layers, gophers act. So glomerulosa is associated with the release of aldosterone. Fasciculata is associated with cortisol. Reticularis is sex hormones like testosterone. Aldosterone, the final step in triggering the release and conversion to aldosterone is angiotensin II and potassium. Who is key though? Cortisol is key. Who is key? Cortisol is key. This is the key for the entire pathway. If it is too high, if cortisol is too high, what happens to ACTH? ACTH will decrease. If cortisol is too low, it's insufficient, what will happen to ACTH? It will actually increase. So let's say that I have an example we're going to continue on with next. It's called Ka, she look like a man. Cortisol is insufficient. There's an enzyme that is broken at this point. So cortisol is insufficient. Aldosterone is insufficient. What's going to happen to blood pressure with, with a lack in aldosterone? You're going to have lower blood pressure, or maybe the blood pressure might not even be affected. What happens with cortisol? When cortisol is low, you don't have as much stress hormone release. Well, then ACTH is going to be high. But aldosterone and cortisol, who's key, are still low. What happens to ACTH? It goes higher. What happens to cortisol? It's still low. So ACTH continues to climb. What is the only path that cholesterol can go to make whatever it is it's going to make? It can't make aldosterone, can't make cortisol, so it's going to make too much sex hormones like testosterone. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Gosh, you look like a man. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, also known as adrenal genital syndrome is a genetic disorder where you're deficient in cortisol and you make too much testosterone. So two terms I want you to know for cause she look like a man are cause she look like a man. So we call it virilism. When you're virile, you look like a man. So male features on a female. Hirsutism. She's hairy. She's very hairy. So male pattern hair distribution, even male pattern baldness for virilism. But hirsutism is hair. Virilism is she look like a man. How do I treat? Didn't I say that you had a an insufficient amount of cortisol? So if I don't have enough cortisol, what do you want to do? I give cortisol. And what does that do for the pathway? Well, let's keep it as simple as we can. Hypothalamus releases CRH, acts on anterior pituitary to release ACTH, to act on the adrenal cortex to release, who is key? Cortisol is key, right? But who is also made? We said aldosterone, cortisol, and testosterone are all made. If cortisol is low, however, what happens? to this feedback. Well, CRH is going to go up, ACTH is going to go up, but we said that aldosterone and cortisol were still low. So what is the only thing that's going to elevate? You're going to have an increase in testosterone. Well, how do I treat this whole pathway? Who's key? Cortisol is key. So if I give treatment and I give you cortisol, what happens to ACTH and CRH? It goes down. So what will happen eventually to testosterone levels? They're going to go down as well. So you're going to see a decrease in testosterone. You're not going to have as much male pattern hair distribution um, and hopefully some correction in virilism. And in, um, in children, we give something called prednisolone. In adults, we give prednisone. Prednisone is 
um, converted in the liver to prednisolone. So children have underdeveloped livers, so we'll give them the active form already in the form of prednisolone. Cushing's, didn't we just say, how do we treat someone that has, oh, she looked like a man. We give them cortisol. One of the problems with giving too much cortisol, it's a stress hormone, but if my treatment was to give cortisol, we said cushion for the pushing, right? Cushing syndrome, Cushing's disease means you have too much cortisol, either being released from your adrenal cortex, maybe you have a tumor, or being given too much. Maybe it's not too much, maybe your body is just responding it to it and you're taking it for a long period of time. If you're given cortisol, and you end up with Cushing syndrome. They call this iatrogenic. That means it was given by the doctor. Okay, so iatrogenic given by the doctor. If I'm given too much cortisol and I get Cushing's, we'll go over what Cushing's looks like. How do you treat someone that has Cushing's because they're given too much cortisol? Well, your goal would be to try and taper down as much as you could to alleviate some of the symptoms of Cushing's but still control the problem or the reason why you're giving cortisol in the first place. So Cushing's, elevated cortisol, some signs and symptoms. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So it can start to break down your muscles. So you're gonna have muscle weakness. Why is it doing that? Usually cortisol, because it's a stress hormone, its goal is to um, provide you with glucose that has to steal from other places. When you have cortisol long uh, for a long period of time, it creates fatigue, muscle weakness, fat deposits in the upper back, moon facies, purple stray, easy bruising, hypertension, and edema or swelling. Here's what it looks like. Moon facies um, means that they have um, fatter face, puffier face, and they're going to have redness in the cheeks. Purple striae are the very pronounced purple stretch marks in the abdomen. So you'll start to see truncal obesity. Like I said, a little bit too much cushion for the pushing. It's the fastest way to remember that you have too much cortisol and this is the result. So these are some of the features that you take a look at. This is some of the features. So like I said, truncal obesity. You might not see the purple striae. Um, sometimes you'll see what they call buffalo hump. And here are the purple striae in Cushing's disease. What are the effects and how would you treat? Well, if it is the result of a tumor, what would you do? If the tumor is inside of the adrenal cortex, maybe you'd um, do some kind of surgery to remove it. So this is before, a little bit too much cushion for the pushing, moon facies, buffalo hump, fatigue, muscle weakness. And then after two years of treatment, somehow removing the excess cortisol, you'll see the face less puffy, um, return to normal eyes are alert. If it's due to iatrogenic, then decrease the amount taken if possible. If it's a tumor, adenoma, then surgically remove or use some kind of radioablation therapy. Pituitary macroadenoma. So if the pituitary, which is enlarged in this case, needs to be removed, how do you get it? You have to go through the nose, through the sphenoid bone, because it sits in the cella turcica of the sphenoid bone, you'd have to access from underneath. Addison's. What did I say Addison's was? If cushion was a little bit too much cushion for the pushing, what is Addison's? I need to add a little more. So here's what Addison's looks like. Addison's. You lack cortisol. So if I don't have enough cortisol, what's the feedback mechanism? Well, let's take a look at some of the things you might see. From the hypothalamus, what do I release? CRH, right? If this is too little, this is gonna go up. But CRH, remember we said CRH works on two hormones of the anterior pituitary? One is cortisol. But the other is MSH. Oh, not cortisol. I should say one is ACTH, right? 
and ACTH then encourages cortisol. But the other one was MSH. And what does MSH do? MSH acts on the skin to release melanin and to cause an increase in brown pigmentation, right? So on someone that has Addison's, what is the side effect of having Addison's? Well, in addition to the adrenal cortex being affected, you can see the skin in areas like the palms of the hand or even the mucous membranes of, of the mouth, the lip, the gums, you'll see darkening of that even though there's no exposure to the sun. So this is one way that you can tell somebody might have Addison's. If you look at their skins, the palms of their hand, they're going to be darker and there's no contrast like this. Right? Let's see what I'm talking about. So it says signs and symptoms of Addison's. It's a decrease in cortisol levels, fatigue, weakness, anorexia, weight loss, GI disturbances. That's, that's not quite as easy to see, but bronzing of the skin, that's something that you can see clearly. Orthostatic hypotension, how does that work? It means that, remember ACTH works on aldosterone, cortisol, and testosterone. Well, somewhere along the lines, maybe you have it broken. A decrease in aldosterone means a decrease in blood pressure. Orthostatic hypotension means standing up and having low blood pressure. And then we said inability to retain salt and water. Something's going on with aldosterone as well. And here we go, bronzing of the skin. Uh, pigmentation distribution in Addison's, looking at the gum line to see it. So what ethnicity is this patient that you're taking a look at? That's one thing that you have to think about. Look at their nail beds, look at the palms of their hands, darkening in the gum area. This is a Caucasian patient, but if you look at the distribution of uh, pigmentation, it's much darker in this patient because of Addison's disease. Treatment, how would you treat it? Well, you have to correct the salt and potassium levels, but you also have to re replace the hormones that are missing. And what hormone is missing? Primarily, it's the it's cortisol. And then aldosterone is for blood pressure, so you want to deal with aldosterone drugs as well. And that's it for this topic. Let's take a little break, and we'll come back shortly.